So MTC is known to migrate application from one OpenShift cluster to another cluster. But in this case now with this new feature, I can migrate an application on the same cluster, but changing the underlying storage for one or multiple applications. So here's, I just went to the operator hub. I've already installed the migration toolkit for containers. So if I would go to the install operators, now you can see it's already deployed. If I click on it, all I did after that is to create the instance of the migration controller. So the migration controller by clicking that button will install the controller inside MTC and will deploy the UI for me to, and all the other components I need to actually execute this, uh, this migration. So here I actually uh, just uh, use the route of this application now of my MTC operator uh, to connect to the UI with the same credential that I would connect to my cluster. And the host where this is installed is already pre-configured for me. And as I'm migrating to the same cluster, I'm doing in-place migration. I don't even have to add additional cluster. I'm just gonna migrate from this cluster to this cluster, which is the host I'm on right now. Then I'm gonna create a migration plan uh, and I will pick an application and change the underlying storage. So here, let's do that. Um, I'll call this plan demo. And this is the new, this is where I will find a new capability, right? So MTC has been known so far for migrating to do full migration, including PVs from one cluster to another. I can do state migration, which was a feature we already had in 1.6, uh, allowing me to migrate the state or just the PVs from one cluster to another, but potentially redeploy my application from pipeline on my secondary cluster. So sometimes it's only the state that I need to migrate. But from but with the storage class conversion uh, feature, now I can stay on the same cluster. I don't even have to migrate to another cluster. I can just select that. I will select the host I'm on right now, which is the only cluster available anyway. I'm gonna click next. And here I only have two simplistic uh, project, uh, which are websites. I'm gonna click on the first one. And this is the one I wanna migrate the underlying storage, right? So let's click next again. And uh, MTC will look for all the PVs that exist inside that, that namespace and will allow me to, to pick a new, a new storage class for those PVs. Um, so let's give it a second. So here only one PV was found. I could potentially have multiple PVs with some other applications, but in this case, it's only one PV claimed by a MySQL database. And the, the, the type of storage class, class doesn't really matter. Uh, actually what is used behind the scene is rsync to copy the data at the file system level. So uh, this would be working from any storage class to any storage class. So uh, think about changing technology from one type of storage to another one or changing to another storage class that might have more space into it uh, if I'm running out of space. So there's all kinds of use cases uh, where this is applicable. So in this case here, I'm just gonna select an, another storage class which, is, uh, which can be anything uh, that I would have available in my cluster. I'm gonna click next. And that's pretty much it. Now my plan has been created and I will be ready to execute this migration. And again, in this case, I only selected one namespace, but I could also do mass migration of storage class classes. So if I would want to migrate a large amount of application from one storage class to another, then I could do that as well. So now that my plan is ready, I can execute this plan. So I can either uh, stage. Uh, so what stage would do is pre-copy the data to my new storage class and uh, will reduce the downtime when I do cutover. As this is rsync that is actually doing the migration, um, it, it depends on the kind of file system I have and the amount of files. And, and so if I have multiple files, it might be better to do stage uh, to reduce the amount of downtime because when I do cutover to do the final copy, I will need to shut down the application to finalize that copy before we can relaunch it again. This is to make sure that we don't have any data um, that is still in memory or any log files. So there's a little bit of downtime, but that can be reduced by doing the stage process first. In this case, for demo purposes, I'm just gonna click cutover and, I'll, and I will click uh, the migrate button. So this will take uh, a little bit of time, a few seconds or a few minutes, depending on how much data needs to be copied over. Uh, if I would want to see what's happening during this process, then I can click on the migration button here and I can go down to see in details what is happening during the migration. So, uh, and if anything goes wrong, you can also look at the migration resources, 
uh, that are behind where I could uh, potentially look at uh, the logs or the describe of the uh, of the CR to understand exactly what happened behind the scene. But hopefully this will go well here. We'll let this run and then we'll come back at the end of the migration. So that's it. This is how you can actually do in-place storage migration using the new MTC 1.7 release. Thank you.